to test validity of an XML document, you in fact do need a schema. And that means the XML file conforms to the structure prescribed in the schema. Speaking specifically for the Environmental Information Exchange Network, uh, we use XML almost exclusively to copy data between partner databases. So uh, partner A might be a state agency and partner B may be US EPA. And for the Exchange Network, we would then use XML as the uh, format as the data travels across the internet. So on the sender side, we have a database to XML translation. And on the receiver side, we have just the opposite. We translate from the XML file back into the database. So how do we translate to and from XML uh, to get in or out of a database? Well, for programmers, there's a number of programming frameworks that are available to facilitate this process. You could also generate XML directly from a SQL database. So uh, we're going to demonstrate this now. We're going to open up SQL Server and we'll use this, a query to output XML. Okay, so now we've jumped to SQL Server and I've got a sample uh, database set up called the permit table. Should look familiar at this point. It's got the same table of data that we have been using for all our examples thus far. And if we do a basic SQL query, like select star from permit, we're going to get the data back in exactly the same way it's stored in the database as a table. Built into SQL Server, you can actually have it turn into XML by default. So to do that, we can just uh, change our query a little bit, putting a little bit on the end here for XML. We run our query, we get an XML string back. And we can open this up in uh, the built-in XML result viewer. And sure enough, we have three permits here, but it did not structure the data the way we want it to. Let's say we want it to look just like we saw in our opening example. In this case, we have attributes to store information about each permit, and this is not how we have it structured in our schema. But we could still uh, use SQL Server to generate this directly for us in a format that's just like we want. Uh, in this case, I've got the same query with nicely formatted results. Uh, in this case, I actually have to uh, manually specify how to create the opening and closing tags. Note that I've got the uh, permit list as the outer element. And then we're going to loop over each permit. And for the permit number, we just indicate uh, the uh, field that contains that value. And when we run this whole query, we get XML output. And it looks just like our example that we showed originally. So uh, we can coerce a SQL Server to produce output just like we want directly from code. There are also XML mapping utilities. Uh, one product that I've used extensively is Altova MapForce. And this is a product that allows you to map from database to XML rather quickly. We'll go ahead and give that a shot now and show you how you can uh, accomplish the same results using MapForce. OK, so this is Altova MapForce. What we can do here is use this program to map a database to an XML file, or we can go the other way around, from an XML file to a database. So what I've done here to save time is I've started off by inserting the database. Now this is just a connection to our SQL Server database in that same table we saw in the earlier example. And uh, next step is to insert the target schema. This is the, uh, the format we want to go to as a result. So I'll go to the Insert menu and choose an XML schema or file. And uh, it's looking for a schema. So we will use our example here called Sample Schema that we just created. It wants a sample XML file uh, to use as an example. And I'll go ahead and add in the XML file that we've been using all along here. So it's added this new box. And sure enough, you can see that a permit has three elements, a permit number, issue date, and text. Now, my uh, database table has exactly the same structure, so this will be very simple mapping. You can just uh, 
click and drag to connect uh, the table to the permit node in the XML file. And in this case, MapForest detected that all of the child elements are the same name, so it automatically co connected those for me. I can then click on the Output tab, and sure enough, it's going to go to the database, do a selection from that table, and formulate that as XML. And by now, this should look really familiar. Uh, we've got the three permits in the output that we would expect. Now, uh, MapForest actually has the ability to generate different language codes. So you can uh, build a C Sharp or Java code or uh, XQuery or also uh, style sheets. Uh, style sheet would not be workable in this particular example. We'll get into style sheets later. Uh, but then the generated code in this case, such as Java or C Sharp code, can then be rolled into another application uh, to do the mapping for you. Now, MapForce can actually go the other way around as well. Uh, we would just need to drag the arrows from the XML to the database. And in that event, okay, so now things are flipped around the other way. Now we're going from XML to database. And the output in this case is a series of select, excuse me, insert statements that will then grab the data from our XML document and insert them into the database. Uh, there's a lot more you can do with MapForce, but it's a little out of scope for this, uh, for this presentation, so we're going to leave it there. MapForce can be a little overwhelming for complex com uh, transformations. So in this case, I've got a real complex transformation here. Uh, so it, it can be complicated. 